If you would tell me that this mini PSP can play Soldier of Fortune, Outrun 2006 or Third Birthday, I would not believe you, but I'm just playing it and it works surprisingly good, I like it. And I'm not saying it because I wanna sell it to you. If I would wanna sell it to you, I wouldn't be standing here in front of this shitty wall in my favorite disc, you know, that's not really professional. And only thing I'm good at is being unprofessional and telling the truth. I'll be a bit biased truth. I would have never thought that this mini retro handheld can go horizontal, but Ambanik proved me wrong and here we have with a brand new model. Well, I almost got you because this didn't go horizontal, but this did. That's the Ambanik, this is Mio Mini. And this is the horizontal version. It is pretty much exactly the same thing, same screen size, same emulators, same specifications, but this new horizontal model has now two joysticks, two stereo speakers, and the triggers are now from the top, whereas here are from the rear side. I'm not sure what they have put inside of this chip, but when I was reading the specs, quad-core CPU, up to 1.5 GHz, 1 GB of RAM, it didn't fill me with much confidence. Yet, it proved me it can emulate a game or two. I grew up with playing PSP and PS1 games, so when the device can emulate plenty of them successfully, naturally I'm gonna like it. And naturally I'm gonna be biased towards liking it, cause that's the human nature. If it plays games I like, I like it, even though it's not perfect. It plays Ratchet and Clank, I like it even though Legend of Zelda doesn't run full speed. I don't care about Zelda as much, but I care about Ratchet and Clank. And that was running surprisingly fine at 1x resolution with auto frame skip turned on. Here and there some stutter, but I would say pretty playable for me. Same as Outrun 2006, coast to coast, very enjoyable. Occasional stutter, but it didn't hamper my enjoyment in the slightest. Nova was not running full speed, but the third birthday was playable, even upscaled at 2x. And the second joystick was also usable, so it felt like a proper third person shooter. Well, almost like a proper shooter, cause the joysticks are too low and the LNR buttons are crap, I'm not gonna lie. Way better than on vertical version, but still far away from actually being enjoyable. So the third person shooter experience was not perfect either. I guess they had to make some compromises, cause the primary focus of this device is its tiny size and compact design. You can easily put it in your pocket. So if you care about that, you can't care about triggers too much. God of War was running slower, around 15 FPS, that's the most demanding game, but it seemed faster. If you would be dedicated enough, I mean, why not? I wasn't as dedicated, but I was even able to beat the first boss. I forgot to mention that this also means that other demanding PSP games are not gonna be playable for speed, like uh, Prince of Persia or Dante's Inferno, just keep that in mind. The performance of this chip really reminded me of 3MUI Smart Pro, which you can buy for around the same price, maybe even a bit cheaper, but it has 5 inch screen, it is much bigger and also much more comfortable. So if you want something bigger, that's also an option to consider. And this talk about retro handhelds reminded me that I would like to thank the company that sent this device over for a review, Go Gang Geek. it's much appreciated. They are a good website in my opinion, the prices may seem a bit higher than elsewhere, but the price you see is the price you actually pay, no extra fees for shipping or taxes, plus they are reliable and they always offer some kind of discount, there is even right now 10% off. The link under the video is affiliate, but clearly if you want to buy it, it's up to you where from. I know my core audience, myself included, we are more into more powerful machines, that is coming too. PS Vita content still coming too, subscribe to not miss it, and click this, click this. Let's move on to Dreamcast. I was very surprised to see Soldier of Fortune to run this good because it's not exactly the easiest to emulate. It is a 3D first person shooter that gives the weaker chips a run for its money. I hope I used the correct expression. Red Dog Superior Firepower is also one of these games that weaker chips are afraid of. I've also tried Res, Jet Grind Radio, in Crazy Taxi 2 
and always playable with some occasional stutter here and there not full speed but this performance is kinda playable for me no issues the display they have used is 3.5 inch LCD with 4x3 ratio and 640x480 resolution and honestly it's quite usable if you are new to the world of mini retro handhelds the interface and operating system they are using is pretty straightforward you just pick the category that you want to play then you pick the game and press A and it will launch then when you are in game you might want to press function button that's this one it will bring up the menu where you can find where you can find save states, load states or change various settings so I just pray, press load state and it will bring me where I saved it last time it's a bit dark but I think you got the idea come here, come here bro I'll get you wow. I believe there are also some custom firmwares already available for this model with some additional features available so you might want to look into that too but we are moving on to DS emulation which is also very good Mario Kart DS or New Super Mario Brothers were running full speed even with high resolution 3D turned on and that's how you want to play it because then the games look stunning and so much better than without it my device came with micro SD preloaded with ROMs but you can buy the device only without ROMs for cheaper and put there what you want here they have included some open bits of rage fun made games Contra locked and loaded Return of Double Dragons they have included also some ports like Quake that can be played with dual joysticks thumbs up I've tried some GTA 2 on the PS1 pretty good but again the shoulder buttons are very tricky to press vertical main pretty fun but the device is quite narrow so it's not ideal for my large hands Pico 8 is here too, I always play just Celeste but I've heard that there are plenty hidden gems in here now let's finish it off with N64 after what I saw with the Dreamcast games I was expecting a bit better performance to be honest but this was mixed back at best Beetle Racing, unplayable Perfect Dark, also very slow Kirby 64, this one was kinda playable but uh, still there were quite a big audio stutters Ocarina of Time, very slow as well as the GoldenEye, that one was the slowest not sure if I was using correct settings but they haven't actually included any game, any N64 game on the SD card so I've just put my, the ROMs in there myself and played them so it was all at the default settings so let's sum it up my final thoughts, what I like I like the screen, I like the speakers, I like the price to performance ratio, it is not bad, but overall the device is just too small for me, joysticks are on a weird place, triggers are hard to press, D-pad isn't the most precise one, if I am meant to judge it as an overall package, if I would spend $70 for this, I wouldn't be exactly pissed off but I also wouldn't be exactly jumping from the happiness if you want something small, horizontal and cheap this can do the job, I like it in that terms much better than a uh, vertical version uh, that one is um, not really for me, this is way better but still it's not perfect, you just gotta know what to expect from this machine thanks to you for watching, thanks to members and patrons for support I'll see you later The truth walks away, everybody says Cause the truth about the world is that crime does pay So if you walk away, who is gonna say As yes, I'd like to feel the world is a better place When the truth walks away, everybody says Cause the truth about the world is that crime does pay So if you walk away, who is gonna say Cause I'd like to feel the world is a better place